Folks, I'm with James Van. He's a longtime housing activist and uh, Oaklander. Mr. Van, your thoughts first of all on the affordable housing problem, and then also the ordinance tonight. Well, Oakland has a tremendous affordable housing problem. In fact, uh, the average income for a household living below MacArthur is something like $30,000 a year. $30,000, if you use HUD standard of 30% of your net income, can actually afford a $750 rent. There is no such thing in Oakland. So, uh, over half of the households in Oakland, and those would be mostly those who live below MacArthur, are spending more than 50% of their income for housing. And a significant number of those are spending 70% or more of their income for housing. Uh, what this means is that if anything happens to that household, uh, to their household stream of income, when they're struggling now, they cannot possibly find replacement housing in Oakland because the average, the average cost of a two-bedroom unit on the market, according to the city's own uh, uh, housing survey, is $2,950. Uh, a person making $30,000 a year would have to work 185 hours in one week in order to be able to afford that. So the affordability crisis is severe. Mm -hmm. The city, it, we have a hard time getting the city council to understand that the private market will not build affordable housing. They can't. Their, the economics of their <laughs> projects, the cost of land, the cost of building, the amount of mortgage and the interest they pay. That's how we had the affordable housing set aside for redevelopment, yes, remember that? Right. So the market cannot build affordable housing. The market will build market housing. Right. So the city is the only one who can build affordable housing. Mm -hmm. Public housing is gone. There is no such thing as public housing anymore. The few units that remain with the housing authority are gradually being siphoned off, mm -hmm. uh, privatized, sold off to nonprofits and others. So public housing is gone. Federal mm -hmm. government does not build it does not finance the building of any public housing. They haven't done it since 1995. Mm -hmm. So the city has to accept the responsibility mm -hmm. that the only entity that will build affordable housing is the city. Mm -hmm. So rather than be concerned with making sure that we have mixed housing, I know my, mm -hmm. that we have housing to serve the moderate income people mm -hmm. and the higher income people. I mean, tonight they have on the agenda uh, an issue where they want to take some of the affordable housing trust funds, mm -hmm. which are supposed to be limited to people of low and very low income. Right. They want to take a certain portion of that money and make it available to people who make 100%, 150% hmm. of AMI. That amount is, for a family of four, $140,000. Wow. So why should the city wow. take public money... Welfare for the rich. To make, yes, to build housing for people who can afford their own housing or who the market will build mm -hmm. for. Nobody will build for the lower income people. So that's the city's job, and that's, uh, that's the problem we're having, getting them to understand that that's the segment of the population they need to be addressing. So what about the moratorium? The moratorium won't do much to build housing. What the moratorium will do is, <clears throat> is bring a pause mm -hmm. to these, this frantic pace of, of high, in, high in, rent increases people are suffering mm -hmm. and these evictions that are happening all over the place many of which are illegal evictions. Mm -hmm. But a tenant doesn't know that. A tenant doesn't know how to distinguish. They Legal get a notice. Right. They get a right. notice from the landlord they saying, freak out. this is a 30-day notice to vacate. Right. They, they don't know how to they, fight. No, and they figured they better start looking for a place. Right. But uh, many of those are, are illegal notices. Uh, an eviction notice has to come from the court.
mm -hmm. and very few of those things even make it to the court. So what the what the moratorium is going to do is say, okay, we got to stop. We got to make it clear mm -hmm. that only the only evictions that can happen during this period are legal evictions, those that comply with the just cause law. Mm -hmm. Anybody who evicts outside of that is going to get penalized. The uh, same thing with in, in rent increases. We're stopping excessive rent increases. Mm -hmm. Right now, landlords can give any kind of increase they want, and it's up to the tenant to file a petition and know, know about filing a petition to come down and try to fight that, mm -hmm. um, which many don't do. They don't do it. They don't. There's no. never been, uh, before this year, there's never been more than one half of 1% of, of tenants who, who, fight a, who fight these high increases because mm -hmm. they don't know. They, they have a right. But the odds are stacked, stacked against them anyway. That's why we're coming up with a totally new rent ordinance. Hey, thank you so it much. Change all that. So anyway, oh. the the moratorium. I will just got say, to thirty seconds. That's why I said. Okay. Yeah, yeah. The moratorium is a time to say stop, mm -hmm. and none of this illegal stuff during this period. It gives us time to work out something that will benefit the people. Thank you. You're, You're welcome. welcome.